So it's been more than 50 years since anyone left footprints on the moon. And the furthest any astronaut has ever traveled is around 400,000 kilometers from Earth, when Apollo 13 flew over the dark side of the moon back in 1970. Now, spacecraft and probes without human crews have traveled so much further than that. The Voyager 1 probe is now 24 billion kilometers from Earth. It's even outside our solar system and in interstellar space. So if we want to spend more time off planet, and if we want to set new horizons for human space exploration, we don't just need to be building rockets and spacecraft. We need to learn so much more about what long-term habitation in space does to our bodies. And we need to know how to counter these effects. One key question that needs to be addressed is what does a lack of gravity do to astronaut health and performance? So when astronauts spend a long time in the weightlessness of the International Space Station, their bones and muscles can start to waste away. The cartilage lining their joints can degrade. They can experience vision problems. Their red blood cells become fragile and their immune system just doesn't work as well to fight disease. But we don't really know exactly how these changes occur. And I think to better understand why a lack of gravity has so many negative impacts on astronauts, we first need to understand how our bodies feel forces. So, take a deep breath. Did you notice how you can feel your chest expand? All right. Now breathe out, and you should be able to feel how your body softens. If you focus in on other parts of your body, you might notice the feeling of clothes against your skin, or maybe the seat underneath you, or the sensation of the soles of your feet against the floor. So these are all examples of our body's amazing capacity to feel forces. And something that I find really interesting is that all of the little cells that go together to make up your body, they can also feel forces. So to be able to feel the force, your individual cells have these tiny little force sensors that can convert a force into an electrical signal that then controls how cells function. And we call these force sensing molecules mechanosensors. So in my research, I've been looking at how these mechanosensors control human health and disease. And one of the things that we've found is that our individual cells can use mechanosensors to feel if they're being stretched or if they're being pulled on by their surroundings. They can use them to feel fluid flow or if they're being deformed. And this means that our individual cells can both feel forces and tell the difference between different forces, just like you can feel the difference between a breeze on your face from the clothes on your skin. We also know that mechanosensors are really important for how our bodies function. And it turns out that they're particularly important in those parts of the body that waste away in space. So I decided to expand my research program to see if we could discover whether mechanoreceptors control how cells change in low gravity environments. And we started by looking um, at a new mechanosensor that we've discovered that we've called ELKIN-1. So under normal gravity conditions, ELKIN-1 is really important for our sense of touch. And we've also found that it's important for some of our individual cells to feel and interact with their surroundings. To find out what happens in low gravity, we actually use a specialised instrument that can cancel out the effect of Earth's gravity on cells in a dish. This instrument simulates a state of weightlessness, or what we call microgravity. And that simply means that the force of gravity on that sample is about one million times lower than Earth's standard gravity. So by using this microgravity simulator, we can do our experiments here on Earth in the laboratory rather than in space. And that makes them really a lot cheaper. It also means we're not really limited in the number of different things that we can test. And if something goes wrong with one of our experiments, well, we can pretty easily do that again. So what we found is if we take cells 
where we've deleted Elkin 1 and we've put them in our microgravity simulator, they don't change. They behave exactly as they would under Earth's standard gravity. So this tells us that, yes, mechanosensors do control how cells change in microgravity. But we've still got a lot of work to do to find out precisely how. So we don't think that Elkin 1 is directly feeling gravity itself, because it doesn't seem to tell a cell which way is up and which way is down. And that's something that a direct gravity sensor would be able to do. What we think is happening is that mechanosensors like Elkin 1 have evolved to function optimally in cells that are being pulled on by Earth's gravity. And that process of evolution has unfolded over four billion years since life first emerged on this planet. And Earth's gravity hasn't really appreciably changed in all that time. And we think that when we put ourselves in this microgravity simulator, they actually undergo changes in shape and structure. And whilst these changes might be subtle, we think it changes the way that forces move through those cells, altering the forces that Elkin-1 uh, experiences, disrupting Elkin-1 function, and causing those cells to change. So we need to expand on these findings and learn more about our mechanobiology, or how our biology is influenced by forces, right down to how microgravity changes the structure of our individual cells. So this research is going to require experts from different backgrounds. We need to learn more about mechanosensors and how they function, but we also need insights from researchers who excel at visualising tiny structures inside cells. We need physicists and mathematicians who can model how forces move through biological structures and how those forces might change in microgravity. And engineers who can build the instrumentation we need to access low gravity environments. So NASA's Artemis mission plans to return astronauts to the surface of the moon, where gravity is about six times lower than it is on Earth. There's also plans to build a lunar base and to send people on that long journey to Mars. So these goals mean that we really need to learn how to slow or reverse the negative impacts that low gravity has on astronaut health and performance. If we don't, the longer those astronauts are away from the pull of Earth's gravity, the more their bodies will slowly waste away. And this will continue to limit the distances that astronauts can travel and the time that they can spend in space. So we need to develop this field of space biology. And this is going to require time and flexibility to promote innovative blue sky thinking, because we essentially have to relearn how our cells function when they find themselves in this unfamiliar state of weightlessness. And this is going to be challenging because we do live in a world increasingly dominated by short-term thinking. And we are talking about an industry that's been largely focused on building rockets and satellites and spacecraft. So we're going to need our funding bodies and our space agencies to support this new field of space biology to support research that takes risks, that takes longer for the benefits to become apparent. And we researchers need to make sure that our teams are collaborative, diverse, and inclusive, because such teams are better equipped to produce innovative science. So we're at the initial stages of understanding our mechanobiology and how we feel forces. As we learn how microgravity affects us down to that cellular level, we will gain new insights into human health and disease here on Earth, because many of the issues that astronauts face in low gravity mimic some of the health problems we see in our aging population. But for me, a focus on health outcomes isn't my primary focus for this research. I want to be part of that next moonshot and reach for the stars. I want to help lay the foundations today to support long-term human performance in space. And I believe if we can better understand our mechanobiology, we're going to be one step closer to leaving footprints further and further afield. Thank you.